would you say is? I'll, I'll give you three choices. Yeah, your top three albums that you're most proud of that you've is oh that God. difficult? That's a, I'm prepared for that. So because you've done so many, so it's like oh man, they come and go, you know. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, I suppose songs from the big chair because yeah. it was so um, yeah. some pivotal things. Man, it's a great album. Yeah. And it's, I've done a documentary about it recently, so that's yeah, yeah. fresh in my head. Um, music for the masses, I love it, mm. but I don't think it's one of the albums I come back to play mm. that much, you know? Mm. So, I don't know, I mean, there's an album by a girl that I mentioned a few times called Anja Garbrek, who's Norwegian. Okay. And I just love, this is probably about 10 years ago I did this album, but I play that occasion, I think she's mm. really clever and uh, lovely songs, you know, great, mm. great ideas on the production. Third one, God, I don't know. Um, oh, there's quite a few, and I yeah, just can't yeah. think. Okay, top of my head, Suede, because yeah. you mentioned it earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're all good, I just, whatever, I can remember. <laughs> yeah, they're all great. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I mean, I'm sure there's another one. I'm going to think of loads after this. Mm, yeah, just send me a text. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> it's quite funny. There was a, a bit of a, uh, on this channel of mine, we've got this, we've got our little buzz buzzwords, and I had, I had a fanboy thing. I, I took a, a photo of your name on my phone, covered your number, by the way. And I said, the surreal feeling of having Dave Bascombe's number on you. And, I, and we're not trying to flatter you or, or say, fat, get all fanboy you, you know, but it's just... Uh, oh, we just sort of watched the Erasure, which is coming out. It was a reissue of that as well. Oh, yes, out. yeah, because you did Erasure I really, as well. really yeah. love that, and I do yeah, listen yeah. to that album a lot, yeah. Chorus, I think. And, uh, chorus was... Yeah. But, pardon my ignorance, were you involved in Chorus? Yeah, I mixed it. Yeah, sorry, yeah. I should have known That's that. Right. Of course, yeah. is a, some, a, a fantastic album. One of their best ones, I think. I think so too. And I've, yeah. I've talked about this recently. Someone, someone asked me about it because uh, it's a reissue coming up. And That's right. to me, it's just we're all. I've said this, but I think we're all on top of our game. So there's mm. Andy and Vince, mm. producer Martin Phillips, who's a great producer, and myself. I think we, and it just all came together, you know. Mm. And it has got such a lovely, warm sound. I've had a really nice compliment for that from a fan. Mm. He said that normally he always likes the, the 12 inches, we used to call them, you know, the extended sure, sure. remix. Oh. And he prefers that as a matter of course over the, the album version. But in my case, he preferred the actual album versions, the remix. Uh, that was a really nice compliment, you know, because yeah. I think we did bring out just, yeah, oh, I don't know how to describe it really, mm. but it's it's beautiful. Well, the songs are amazing, mm. absolutely amazing. I mean, it's just Vince and Andy are absolutely fantastic songwriters. They absolutely I, are. I think that album was just. Great live performers as well, yeah. But I think also Martin took it in slightly different direction. It wasn't so out and out pop mm. uh, camp. I can use that word. Yeah, it yeah, wasn't, yeah, you know, yeah. wasn't quite so much so, so blatant. Then it was. There's more depth to it. Mm. Uh, anyway, so I'm, I'm really, really happy with that. Mm. It was great fun to do as well. That's great. As I said, I, I as I said, I try to do as much re research. And chorus is one of my favourite. Okay, well, just just one more question. Um, now, obviously, if you mix for people um, in it, w obviously you don't produce for some, you, you don't do production unless you're very, um, you know, yeah, into it or so. But but at one point, at what point, if someone says, "I want you to mix this song," because um, they're going to go back and say, Dave Basco mixed this. Mm. There must be a point where you go, I don't want to touch that because it just doesn't sound good enough. Ah. Well, it's, if it's that bad, I yeah, wouldn't. Yeah. You know? uh, yeah. But sometimes you just don't know. Yeah, because um, some people like to names drop. So I mean, oh, you wouldn't, see, yeah, you wouldn't yeah, yeah, yeah. They say, oh, this was mixed by Dave Basco. But if you've got something that was really bad, yeah. you wouldn't necessarily touch it because of that. Uh, yeah, it doesn't happen very often, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. And because the standards are quite high these well, days. Well, also, yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. It's technology. But also, there's a kind of, there's a kind of, um, not perverse, but it's a slight instinct for me that I want to see what I can do with this. Oh, I see. Okay. And if I can make it into something, yeah, that's that you can, you know, it's got something going for it oh, that I actually enjoy myself. You know, it doesn't yeah. always happen. I mean, I've done a few ones where I think, oh, crisis! I wish I hadn't said that yes mm. to this. You know, um, obviously, but um, usually I'll try and I'll bring out something in it. I'm, I'm quite pleased with. You know? Sure, sure. And it's not be perfect because if I'm if I'm not dealing with a, mm. something that's great in the first place, I'll be bodging it slightly or yeah. overdoing something to bring something to, you know, exactly. I did something for, <laughs> he's going to hate this, I did something for my son the other day. Oh, okay. And, um, you know, they, it's a young band, they spent this, a day in a studio, in a demo studio. The guy did a great job, um, I can't remember his name, but obviously it was not produced, it mm. was, you know, had a lot of limitations. So I just screwed the fuck up, you know, <laughs> and I wish, I didn't want to, because mm. it, it, it didn't really need But you that, know what the expectation is. A bit, yeah. and I just thought this is the only way, I said, I'm mean, going to try a load of different approaches, and that's the only way I could get it to work on my level, you know. Mm. And um, so that's an example of, 
I know what I'm looking uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't charging it for yeah, it. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, but um, yeah, so it's always, I like the challenge of working on something that mm. isn't perfect. Mm. Yeah. And obviously demos don't really exist in the same way they this do anymore. True, yeah. Because you know, you're not really listening. It's not like some old port studio demo that yeah. you can really, you know, obviously it is what it is. But uh, yeah. demos now, if they're in a computer, you can do a lot of sound replacing and all yeah. sorts. So. Well, I find it's quite popular now, especially with the younger producers, is they'll start a session and they'll kind of mix as they master, as they go. Absolutely. So, and, oh, yeah. and, and, and I've, I've done this before where I've, you start like that and you throw things into the master bus, you get it to sound good and you go, okay, now let me pull everything down and start mixing it. And you can't get back to where it was. So, and and the, the purists have a problem with that approach. You've got yeah. to separate everything, but at the end of the day... I've no had this wrong. conversation a lot just recently, actually, and it's, um, it is very interesting because there's two... Um, this is on the same podcast, actually. This guy was mentioning the mixing is completely different from what it used to be. Mm. Totally, because mm. now... <clears throat> I've just done two albums that were the extreme opposites, actually. One was exactly what you mentioned, where mm. these guys produced themselves and everything was meticulous. Mm. Pro Tools session, everything arrived. And really, the record sounded great as it mm. was. And, I, and sometimes I do say, what do you want me to do with this? Yeah, exactly. You know? um, and I wouldn't very rarely turn something down, because, but if I think I can't do anything to mm. it, because usually people say, just do what you do. Yeah. And that's quite weird, because I don't know what I do. Yeah. And, and hopefully they'll, they usually seem to like it. Um, but you're just taking it on the extra step. Mm. And then the other extreme was this album I'd done, which was actually uh, done very, very fast. And um, so it's good because no one had, and the whole project was, had a big deadline. So there's no chance for anyone to get precious about it. But I had no reference mixes. There was nothing, um, they hadn't worked on the session at all. Everything sure. was totally like in the old days, very much like pushing up a real estate sure, where sure, sure. you've got nothing. There's nothing yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, by definition. And that was great because it was so liberating. Sure. So basically, I could do exactly without having to. And I'm constantly a being back to their version mm. because it's so easy to lose track. You know? Of course. Um, and that's why I insist on having all the, the, yeah. the plugins that they, sure. they're using because um, and a lot of people do that as well. But I, yeah. mean, I think Spike Stemp won't go near a session unless he's, he's yeah. delivered. I mean, some producers, there was a stage where a producer would, was reluctant to pass a session on to a mixer and uh, he strip all the plugins out. Oh, I see. And that's just hopeless. You, you know? choose, because you, you're, you're taking away all your signature sounds. Absolutely. And, everything. and it's that border thing where in the old mm. days, that EQ would have been recorded to tape. Exactly. So it would be there, you know. Exactly. Now it's it's always an option. Yeah. Man, so they can take it off again. And... Dave, just, just one question, a uh, final question for this Geek Talk series. Do you work very fast? Because I always find when it comes to mixing, and the reason when I do my own music, I, I'm able to uh, achieve the sound I want, but I've started working with other mix engineers now just bec just to stop myself from going crazy. So mm -hmm. I get it to a point and they take off. But I, th I found with mixing, there's a certain sort of gestation period, if that's the word. When you start a song, there's all this excitement and stuff in it. And I find that kind of dissipates because you get to that point where the perfectionism kicks in. Mm -hmm. So do you find with mixing, um, it's a very time-specific thing, like because you lose perspective if you spend too long? Well, what I do is tend to... I do tend to get up very, very quickly, mm. and if I'm in, if I get what I just call a vibe, I'll print it and make it and, and save the session uh, as that, mm. and then I drive myself completely mental because I will, I do go down. I try and explore all as many alleys that sure. present themselves. Or you know, usually I'm thinking, oh, that's, that's not right, is it? Mm -hmm. And I'll try and fix it, and usually go completely off the boil, and then. Quite often, I'll have three or four different versions, and I'll be driving myself completely crazy. Thinking, well, I like the element of that from that yeah. one, but that involves that mixed bus train. And, and sometimes I get in a very complicated mess. But um, as I, I'd like to keep it, I wish I could keep it simpler. But sometimes I do drive myself. So the process, the initial process, is very fast. Sure. Then it's 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 I don't know. If it's the perfectionism. Really, it's not it's mm. like not perfectionism on certain on yeah. the details. It's sure. the overall yes. vibe. Okay, that had a vibe on that one. Yeah, but that's wrong mm. and trying to find a way of just trying to find your favorite and that can be very difficult yes, I mean, once yes. that's the way of losing perspective quite quickly is have, have, having too many things to listen to again this this album that i did that there was no references was just mm. liberating i mean even then i started driving myself bad i had like yeah. four mixes and i'm thinking well i love that stuff but it's too yeah. that's too compressed but i like the excitement of it it's difficult because you have to choose you know, you yeah to it's my job to choose yeah, and yeah. i have made the mistake in the past of sending off a couple of versions to different i said you know, a guy or the band and saying I'm a bit stuck here. Can you? Which mm, one do you prefer? Mm. And that's really it's my job. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. and it's just creating a. They don't want that. They don't want to listen to two versions. Sure, sure. Yeah, 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 really, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they don't know either. It's, yeah. it's just creating a shitstorm. Yeah, so yeah. that's my shit job. Yeah. Uh, that is a good word. <laughs> uh, Dave, is, that, is there any sort of uh, words of wisdom you'd like to give to the geeks out there? Any... Well, we said a lot about it. I mean, yeah. said not the gear isn't that important. Yeah. Please don't. Spend all your money on that, you know. Yeah. If you're doing recording, buy a better good mic, you know, and that sort of yeah, thing. Yeah. Which I think is kind of a lot of people know, but um oh I don't know, man. I mean it's just important to have ear breaks. I mean I, I yeah. just you gotta give yourself some Yeah. If you can 
leave it up overnight. Sure, know. sure. But go and have a cup of coffee. Sure, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's just crucial. Breaks, if you yeah. sit there, I mean, I just still do it myself. I'm convinced it's, oh my God, it's nearly there. I can't just go and break because it's nearly there. And yeah, I yeah, yeah. Oh, um, I need to listen to that. Tweet, and, I'll, and I'll print it sometimes. I'm preparing to send it to someone. I go, fuck up, no. And then I'll go back and do something. And then, you know, so you can go, I think everyone goes up their ass. And, yeah. Um, the only way to round it really is to have a break. Yeah. Listen to something else. Mm. If it's the rough mix, go check the rough mix. Yeah. Because everyone is very dismissive of their rough mix. Even, yeah. if, it, even if now it has yeah. been home yeah, to yeah. what you talk about. Yeah. Certainly in the old days, everyone goes, oh, that's just bullshit. Mm-hmm. But it's there is something there. There's an essence of how they were enjoying it at the time. Yeah. And it might seem miles off to them and yeah. you, but this, it's very easy to lose that essence. I always find that the rough mix these days, because the technology is, that's where the... When you listen to something, that is where the initial intuition kicks in. Boom, 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 boom. When you yeah. go, and 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 there is, I've learned this that there is magic in that first decision. Absolutely. Of, so I think the, the the decisions you make in the first few minutes are the fundamentals that should yeah. carry through. I've just found because once you start tweak, 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 it's get get to the fundamental quickly, mm-hmm. and then. Well, absolutely right. I and think I think so. um, in the same way that the band are instinctively doing the rough mix. Exactly. Way, you do instinctively stuff. And as I say, I'll, I'll print a, a, a mix that is completely rough around the edges mm-hmm. and all sorts of things wrong with it, but it's got, a, it's got, I mean, in some ways it's, it's, it might happen the other day. I, just, I, just, I did, um, I think on this album, they used mix one of something mm. and that hardly ever happens, but that's, I was really chuffed mm-hmm. that I got it. And I know I, that was a, an earlier mix I'd done mm-hmm. and I did spend a bit of time mm-hmm. trying to improve it. Mm-hmm. And just, but luckily, I think the good thing is that one of the things about experience is that I know I don't know instantly when something's right, but something in my head, just the back of my mind thought, actually, that's got something. Yeah, yeah. And I went back to it, and the things that are bugging me, I thought, yeah, they're not really a problem. Mm. And I sent it off, and everyone thinks it's great, and it is great. Mm. Um, so I'd, I'd done another version that would be more polished or whatever, but um, I just knew that I'd lost something. Sure. I think keeping an emotional memory of where you were is really difficult mm. and really mm. important, though. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's practice. Yeah, it yeah, really yeah. Is. yeah. So if you know another, you know, example I said there, said to this guy, look, I've sent you this version, but actually I, li- I had a memory of the vocals sounding better on the backing vocals sound on this one. So I've tried, I've went back and imported them, mm-hmm. which you can't do in Logic apparently. Uh, but I do that all uh, the time in Pro Tools. So I'll go back to my vibe mix and yeah. I'll import the vocals from that into the, my oh, new session. And sometimes I end up with a thousand different versions of, you know, especially if it's a big backing vocal. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you get a bit of a mess, but um, that's how I do it. Mm-hmm. So just try and keep an emotional memory of, yeah, what we're saying. Yeah, yeah. You're, and your intuition and instinct kicks in, and, and yeah. don't, don't question it. Yeah, well, yeah. So it is intuition, but it's very easy to lose that. Yeah, the closer you get into it. So, um, yeah, practice. Dave, <laughs> this has been a, a, a much longer geek talk episode than I wanted. Not in a bad way. It's just I'm respectful of your time. But as I say, there is so many things we can talk about. Um, but it, 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 it's it's really nice to just kind of get behind who you are and what you've done cool. and uh, nice. as I say because if you went to most people and you went to people in the street and you said who's Dave Bascom they wouldn't know mm. people in the industry would but if you asked people oh they'd know who you you know you're, you're, they'd know the music you've yeah, done but, yeah. so it's, but I don't think how many I don't know how many well there are obviously I mean Trevor Horn people most, most yeah exactly him, but exactly no, I mean well, I think it's partly because I am mixing and maybe we haven't got such a high profile mm. as a producer mm. um, like Trevor Horn for example mm. um, but also um, uh, yeah, I mean, well, it comes back to this Depeche Mode thing where I did one album, so mm. it's not like um, mm. I'm not a regular, yeah, yeah, kind of work with them, you know? yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I haven't, um, mm. but yeah, I don't know, I don't, I don't know, answer that really. Well, you also, you also is in one of the top four Depeche Mode fal- uh, albums, as I say, according to we, we have we have the stats on the channel, I can promise right. you. Well, it's funny because I listened to it again this morning, I say it's not one that I'd normally play that often, but I thought, actually, this is really yeah, good. It's some nice, really nice yeah, stuff here. That's coming cool. back to, and I so say we're going to address that in the next episode on the mm. Piano Keyboard Artist Series. Um, before we go, i like to just, in the description below, put some links to how people can uh, check you out. Right, um, well, my main, the main link I use is uh, at Echo Beach Management. Echo Beach Management. Guys, I will put links to all the contact details and um, uh, Dave Batone's uh, discography, biography, in the links below, and you can check that and all out. And as a podcast I did a couple of months ago with a guy called John Lamoureux. I don't know how okay. you pronounce it, but okay. I'm just sending the link Well, I'll put that. links to all of that yeah. in the description below. Dave, thank you so much. Pleasure. We'll see you Absolutely next pleasure. on the Piano Keyboard right. Artist Series. Thanks. See you later, guys.